Welcome to your Active Heart, Healthy Heart exercise program. We're going to begin with the warm up, which is essential for preparing the body and preparing the heart for exercise. So start with the feet slightly apart, soften the knees, pull up through the spine, take the shoulders forward, up, back, gently down. Imagine that you have a piece of string pulling you towards the ceiling. Now breathe in, and as you breathe out, pull your tummy tightly into your backbone, but you're breathing out at the same time. Now release by 50%, and keep this good posture all the way through your exercise program. And off we go. Starting in gear one, a gentle march, a swing of the arms, and take the shoulders forward, up, back, gently down, again. Consider your posture, nice and tall. And we're going to start with a heel dig. We're only in gear one, so we're keeping the exercise quite gentle at this stage. Let's take it back to the march. And when you're marching, think of your posture again. Tummy tight, shoulders relaxed. And the toe tap now. Lengthening the foot and tapping the toe onto the floor in front of you. Well done and a march. We're now going to do a knee raise. Tighten the tummy muscles and up comes the knee. Just to about 45 degrees. If you feel a bit wobbly, then just tap the toe in front. Your choice. And back to the march. The leg is now going to the side, so gently does it. Each time you come back to centre before you extend the leg sideways. And it's the march. Now the leg is going back so a gentle bend of the knee, not too energetic at this stage, and keeping the heel high, tap behind you. It's the march. We're now going to loosen up the spine. So take the feet slightly apart, soften the knees by bending them gently and wiggle the toes. Nice and tall and slide down to the middle, other way. We're loosening up the spine. Take care not to go too far. Just what's comfortable for you. And back to the mark. The spine works in two directions. So let's take the feet slightly apart, wiggle the toes, hands across the chest, and look to the right, to the middle. You'll notice it's just my rib cage that's moving. The hips are pointing forward. There's no movement from the waist down. And of course, the toes are wiggling like mad. back to the march. We're now going up to gear two, which is slightly more energetic movement. If you feel you're working too hard at any time, please follow Caroline, who's going to do the lower intensity marches. And the elbows slightly bent, 
all the way round. The tummy is tight and the posture is good. And back the other way. And you'll notice that Caroline's doing a shoulder roll if this is uncomfortable for you. Well done. Back to the march. Now the heel digs and so a little lower on the bend and because we're gear two we're going to add some arms but you'll notice Caroline's doing the lower level and her arms are swaying gently back to the march pull tall excellent now the toe taps and a bicep curl. Again, Caroline's doing the lower intensity option. And back to the march. Ready with the knee raise. Pull the tummy in tightly for balance and up we come. The knee comes a little higher because we're in gear two and we're moving the arms a little more energetically. Excellent. Back to the march. The leg is now going to the side. So nice and gently, toe tap. The knee is bending a little lower. And as we're in gear two, I'm taking the arms out to the side. Excellent work. Back to the march. A swing of the arms, nice and tall. The leg is now going backwards. Here we go. Heel high, toe tap. A little deeper on the bend. And of course that bicep curl. Are you beginning to feel a little warmer? Excellent work. Back to the march. Back to the spine. So let's take the feet slightly apart. Wiggle the toes, pull up through the spine. Tummy tight. And down, back to the middle. Take care that you keep the body in the middle and you avoid bending forward. One more each side. And back to the march. Okay, we're now going to do the spinal rotations. Take the feet slightly apart, bend the knees slightly, wiggle those toes. Hands across the chest, to the right. Side, middle. And just going as far as is comfortable with those hips facing forward. Good work. Now we're bringing the intensity up a little more because we're in gear three. So check the posture, but the knees are marching well, the arms are swinging, and bend the elbows slightly, and imagine that you're combing your long golden locks. If you have any discomfort in your shoulder, then follow Caroline, who's doing the lower version, and back the other way. Well done. Keep that march going. Keep up the energy. And we're going into the heel dig. Here we go. And now you'll notice that I'm bending quite a good deal more than I did in gear one. And we're going to add some big arms. Caroline's doing a lower intensity, so her arms are not so high and she's not bending quite so low. 
choose who you'd like to follow, whatever's comfortable for you. And march. Now we've got the toe tap. Here we go. So the same principle, we're in gear three, so nice and low. And make yourself work a little bit harder by bringing those big arms. And again, Caroline's intensity is considerably lower than this gear three. And march. It's the knee raise. Tummy nice and tight. Pull up through the spine. Up you come. The knee's coming up to about 90 degrees, which is up to about hip level. And we're making the heart work a little harder by using bigger arm movements. However, if you do feel wobbly, then don't forget, you can toe tap, but keep the arms going at a bigger rate. Well done, take a march, nice big move. The leg is now going to the side and toe tap. The weight's in the middle, the supporting leg is bending quite low. And of course, we're in gear three, so we put in those big arms. Caroline's arms are lower and she's not bending quite so low. Excellent work. March it out. Get that posture check. Now we're taking the leg to the back. And heel high. A nice deep bend. Make the movement harder by taking the leg a little bit further back. But keep the heel away from the floor. Now the arms come into play. If you're finding that your RPE is getting above light, then please follow Caroline and take the intensity down a little bit. Well done. Back to the march. Good arm swing, nice and tall. Well, I hope you're feeling a little bit warmer. We're now going to prepare the muscles by giving them a stretch. So take the intensity down a little bit. Just walking through the feet and bring the arms around. Imagine you're hugging that big person who's quite small, so look at down at them. You should feel a gentle tension in the top of the back. Well done, release that stretch. Centralize, think of your posture. Now place the right arm onto the right shoulder, slide it down the back, and with the left hand, just support the arm. If this is painful or uncomfortable, then take the arm across the body and just support it and feel the stretch between the elbow and the shoulder and release that stretch. Now we have to do this on the other arm. So place the hand on the shoulder, slide down the back as far as is comfortable and with the other arm, just support the arm a gentle tension between the elbow and the shoulder. If that's uncomfortable, as I say, you can take it across the body. And release that stretch. Keep the march going. Consider your posture as you put your hands on the small of the back and gently draw the elbows together so you're stretching the chest muscles. Well done. Release that stretch. Now tapping behind, heel high. We're thinking of the lower body as we take the right leg back. Gently ease the heel into the floor. Take the weight forward onto the left leg. Wiggle the toes a little. And the march. Toe tap behind. And we're now taking the left leg back. Gently ease the heel into the floor. Check that both toes are facing forward.
Well done, and back to the march. Keeping a good posture, we heel dig to the front. The feet go underneath the hips, the toes are facing forward. Bend the knees slightly as if you're sitting on a bar stool. Take the right leg forward, squeeze the tummy in, the hands are at the top of the thighs for support. Look at the ground before you and bend forward until you've got the tension between the knee and the hip of the straight leg. Slowly back up again, well done. And we're going to repeat that on the other leg now. It's heel dig. Now take the feet underneath the hips, toes facing forward, bend the knees, extend the left leg with a relaxed foot, pull the tummy in nice and tightly with the hands at the top of the thighs and bend forward with the eyes looking at the floor in front of you. and slowly back up, well done, march out. The next stretch is for the front of thigh, which involves standing on one leg. So Caroline is going to use the wall for support, and if you feel that you're a bit unstable, that's the best way to do it. Taking the weight onto the right leg, focus on something that's not moving, bring up the foot, hold the shoelaces, or if it's more comfortable, the tracksuit bottom. The knees are in a straight line and feel the tension in the front of the thigh. Well done, march out. Now take the weight onto the left leg. Again, focus on something that's not moving. Bring up the foot, hold the shoelaces or the tracksuit bottom, whatever's most comfortable for you and feel the tension in the front of the thigh. Back to the march. Well done. Good work. Well, that's our warm up finished. But before we go into the conditioning phase, we need to bring the heart rate up slightly. So let's have a good old march. Bring up the knees, swing the arms, and stand nice and tall. Well done, everybody. Well done, everybody. Now we're going to start level four of the conditioning component. So the foot to the side. And as the leg goes out, the arms go up to about shoulder height. Come back to the middle each time before you toe tap. How's that feeling for you, Caroline? Well, at shoulder height, it's just that little bit too much work for me. So I'm going to take the arms down more to waist height. That feels much better. Brilliant work. back to the march. Our next exercise is a hamstring curl. So just place your feet hip distance apart and then we're moving the foot up to your bottom. So get the legs going, nice and rhythmic, and then bring in your arm movement. Now again, although I try bringing my arms up to shoulder height, I can feel that the workload's just a bit too hard for me. So I'm going to lower my arms. But Leslie, how's that for you? That's not too bad. I'm taking a bit of a deeper bend with my leg and bringing my arms up to shoulder height. So it's feeling just right.
How are you doing at home? Are you still able to talk back to us, I wonder? And we're moving back to your march. We're now going on to the knee lift. Nice and tall through the body, tummy tight. If you feel a bit wobbly, touch the toe to the front like Caroline's doing. Up you come. Knee to 90 degrees. A good strong movement with the arms. To keep your balance, to keep stable, pull your tummy in nice and tightly and imagine that you've got a bit of string pulling you to the ceiling. Well done, and we're going back to the march. Tummy pulled in, nice and tall. So on to our next exercise, we're tapping behind and in. So back, nice and light on the toes. It's the ball of the foot striking the ground. Heel is well elevated away from the floor. And bringing in your arms as and when you're ready. So again, we're lifting the arms to the front, to shoulder height if you can, but check how your breathing's feeling. For me, that's just a little bit too tough. So I'm gonna bring the arms down, but Leslie looks like she's managing really well. How are you doing? Well, at this point, you need to think how you're feeling. Think of your RPE, think how you're breathing, and we'll be able to give you a moment to record it after this exercise. And back to the march. Taking the march down, now's the point that if you've been asked by your cardiac rehabilitation team to record your RPE and heart rate, you can do so now. Our next exercise is an active recovery. So if you've been advised by your cardiac rehabilitation team, pick up your weights now. Shoulders down and relax, tummy pulled in tightly, pull up tall through the spine and raising up, so lift up and gently down. The elbows come to the side. The elbows are lower than the shoulders and the wrists are lower than the elbows and all the time you're keeping that really good posture. How's that feeling Caroline? Well, it does feel funny not using the weights, but that's absolutely fine. Take care that the movement is slow and controlled. You should be able to feel your shoulders working and the top of your upper back. And remember, breathe. Well done, and we're back to our march. So pop your weights back down, but please do keep your feet moving. So our next exercise is our dynamic march. So we're picking up our knees, really swinging the arms, really power marching it out. Leslie loves this exercise, so she's really going for it. But actually bringing my knees up, hip height, just a bit too much. So I'm gonna just take it down 
just a notch or two. How are you doing, Leslie? Well, if you feel this exercise is light, bring the knees up a bit higher and really swing the arms from the shoulders. a less dynamic march. Bring the knees down, lose the swing from the arms. We're now going on to that half star. So bend the knee, take the foot to the side. And to make it a true half star, bring in the arms. Just about shoulder height. If you feel that this is light, then just bend the legs a little more and take the arms up to the shoulders. How's that, Caroline? Well, arms to shoulder height, my breathing starting to uh, get a little bit deeper than I'd like. So I'm going to take the arms down a bit. Also finding it a little bit trickier to talk. So that's probably about right for me. How's your breathing? It's good. feel it's hard, bring the arms down. Brilliant work. Back to that march. So our next exercise is your hamstring curl. So take the feet under the hips and we're taking the weight from side to side, lifting the heel up to your bottom. So placing the foot firmly to the floor as you transfer your weight across. When you're ready, bringing in those arms. How does that feel, Leslie? Well, it's light. So I'm going to bend my supporting leg a little bit deeper. Bring my arms up to shoulder height. And keep talking to you just in case I get too puffy. <laughs> my hands have just naturally dipped down a little bit and I'm not bending so much through the leg. But at this level, I feel that I'm working just about right, I would say. Excellent. And back to that march. While you're marching, check the posture, pull up through the spine, tummy tight shoulders relax. Next one's a knee raise and remember if you're a bit wobbly do the toe tap follow Caroline with that exercise. Here we go. All right keep nice and tall shoulders relax and knees at 90 degrees to the hip. I'm making the exercise a little harder by taking my arms a little higher. How's that toe tapping going, Caroline? Yeah, it's actually feeling quite good. So I'm gonna try just bringing my knee up a little bit higher, so more like 45 degrees, to see how that affects my rate of perceived exertion. Obviously, if it feels like it's gonna get too much for me, I'll just go back to my toe tap. Feeling all right so far, Leslie? Warm, but not puffy. Good. Okay, back to the march. We're now on to our next active recovery. So again, if your cardiac rehab team have advised you, pick up your weights. So keeping the march going, pull up through the spine, hands in front of your body, and slowly raise your arms to the side, about shoulder height, and then gently down. Up, and gently down. A 
And again, you'll see the movement is slow and controlled. If your shoulders start to ache and you're using the weights, you can always just finish off the set using body weight. You'd be surprised actually how the muscle will fatigue even with just body weight. Good work, well done. Okay, place your weights back down. And we're on to the next cardiovascular station. So our next one is our tap back. So just tapping the floor behind you and bringing the arms in when you're ready. You should find yourself feeling a bit refreshed after your active recovery. So arms coming up to shoulder height. Just check how hard you feel you're working. And I'm just gonna adjust and just bring my range of movement through my legs and my arms just down a tiny bit. How are you feeling, Leslie? Well, I'm taking a deep bend back. My arms are coming up to shoulder height. Yet, if I find it's hard, then I can adjust that by bringing the arms lower and taking out the length of the stride behind. Well done, and you're back to your march. Okay, here we go, that really good march. Knees high, swing the arms, keep that good posture, mean business. Do you mean business, Caroline? Absolutely. <laughs> but again, you'll notice that my range of movement is not quite as large as Leslie's. It's really important that you're body aware and you're thinking about how hard you're working. So taking the intensity up and down as appropriate for you. So for me, just slightly toned down movements. I'm working really well. How are you doing, Leslie? Well, this is good fun. And I feel that it's probably hard. I wouldn't want to work any harder than this. And we're back to the mark. We're now going on to that half star. So leg to the side, back to the middle each time. Bend the supporting leg, keep the tummy nice and tight. And we're going to the side with the arms, about shoulder height. If you feel that this is light, then make the leg bend bigger and the arms more dynamic. What are you feeling like, Caroline? I'm certainly feeling warm, but I don't want to confuse that with how hard I feel I'm working. So just a slight adjustment. Yep, I'm doing well, thank you. And we're back to that march. Keeping nice and tall, tummy pulled in, shoulders back and relax. Okay, so just taking the feet slightly wide, we're doing your hamstring curl. So get those feet going and adding in your arm movement when you're ready. So I'd like you to start thinking of your rate of perceived exertion. At the end of this exercise, you'll have opportunity to make a note of how hard you feel you're working or your heart rate as you've been advised by your cardiac rehab team. It's 
So how's your breathing doing? Can you still talk back to us? How are you doing, Leslie? Well, I've had a little think and I thought it was light, but made the exercise more intense by taking the arms up and it became hard. So I took the arms back down. So we're going back to our march. And if you're going to make a note of your RPE or heart rate, please do so now. But please do keep your feet moving. We're now going on to our next active recovery, which is a wall press up. Make sure you find a sturdy wall. Don't do it against the door, just in case somebody might come through it with disastrous consequences. Place your hands about shoulder height with the fingers pointing towards the ceiling. Take a small step back from the wall and take the weight onto the arms. Slowly lower the nose towards the wall and push back again. You'll need to do around about 12 to 15 repetitions of this exercise. Any more than this and you're probably working too fast. You'll notice that while Caroline's heels are on the floor, as she moves forward, her heels gently raise. That's perfectly okay. How's that feeling, Caroline? Yes, that feels fine. I can really feel my chest and arms working. If you find the exercise too easy, then take a bigger step away from the wall and that will make the exercise harder. And back to the march. Our next exercise is our knee raise. So checking your posture is good, tummy muscles pulled in. We're gonna bring our knee up 45 degrees. Leslie will aim for hip height for her knee. Remembering if you're feeling a little unsteady, just go back to your toe tap. At the moment, I'm feeling quite comfortable doing my knee raise, so I'm gonna stay at 45 degrees. Leslie's got a bigger arm movement going and a big leg movement going. So how are you feeling doing that, Leslie? I feel at the moment this is somewhat hard. So I'm going to keep my arms at this height and bring my legs up this high and stay with this. And we're coming back to your march. Well done, excellent work. Now we're taking the toe behind, so toe behind in a little tap. The heel is away from the floor and we have quite a nice deep bend on the supporting leg. And we're going to make it a little harder by bringing in some big arm movements. Is this okay for you, Caroline? Yep, I'm feeling really good. Breathing's quite happy. I'm able to chat to you nice and easily. So those are my checks. So arms to shoulder height is feeling actually all right, but I will take them down if I feel I need to. So you'll notice my arms have sunk, starting to feel working a bit too hard. Fortunately, we're back to our march. So our next exercise is our big march, really energetic. So lifting those knees up to hip height if you can. So marching as energetically as possible, swinging the arms, really getting into this. Now for me, that's just a little bit too much. So I'm just going to adjust slightly. Leslie, 
What are you up to? Well, I'm swinging my arms vigorously and really raising those legs. A good old march. How are you doing at home? Is your breathing good? Is it nice and regular? Can you still talk back to us? Doing really well. And we're back to our more regular march. So bringing the pace down. We're now going on to that half star. So bend the knee, take the foot to the side. And to make it a true half star, bring in the arms. Just about shoulder height. A nice full movement. How's that, Caroline? Yep, I can certainly feel I'm working today. So my arms just slightly lower than shoulder height, more like waist height. That feels about right for me. Any more than that, I wouldn't be able to talk back to you. How are you doing? This is just about right. This is feels somewhat hard. I don't think I'd like to work any harder, so I'm keeping it at this level. And back to the march. So we're on to an active recovery now. We're going to be doing our bicep curl. If you're with me, you're not using weights. If you have been advised to use a weight, you're following Leslie. So with our bicep curl, it's just a very nice, slow lift of the hand up to your shoulder. The upper arm stays nice and still tucked into the side of the body. Tummy muscles should be nicely engaged. Head pulling up tall, so check that posture. Keeping your feet moving all the time. Nice, slow, controlled lift. Well done. How does that feel for you, Leslie, with the weights? It's nice to have a little bit of weight. You can feel the resistance and you can feel your biceps working. You can feel the top of your arm working. Doing really well, keep going. So this will be our last one and then we're moving back to our march. Well done everybody. Did extremely well with level four. We're now moving on to the cool down. Well done. You finish your conditioning component now, we're entering the cool down. The cool down is necessary to bring the heart rate and the body back to the pre-exercise level. If you feel you're getting tired or feeling you're working too hard or hard, then follow Caroline, who will be doing the lower level of intensity. Right, here we go. Heel digs with big arms. Caroline, how are you feeling on this? Yep, I'm fine, but as I'm trying to bring my heart rate down now, I'm doing a bicep curl. And back to the march. Now we're going into a toe tap. And again, bending the supporting leg and the heart rate's up. So big arms. Caroline, where about are your arms while I'm doing this? I'm doing my bicep curl, so the hand just quite naturally swings up to the shoulder and I'm not bending quite as deep as you I should think so feels very comfortable for me and we're going back to the march it's now the knee raise if you're a bit wobbly then follow Caroline who's doing a toe touch brace your tummy muscles and raise the knee remember we're in gear three so keep that energy up
and back to the march. At this level, I'm still marching vigorously. Caroline, are you at this vigorous level? Not quite as vigorous as you. <laughs> now the legs going to the side, a deep bend, and the arms are coming up to shoulder height. And back to the march. Now the legs going backwards, keeping the heel high, tapping the floor with the toe behind you, and the arms are high. If you're finding this difficult, you may want to follow Caroline, who's doing a lower level of intensity. And it's back to the march. We're now going down to gear two, so take the oomph out of the march. The movements aren't so intense, so starting with the heel dig, not such a big bend of the knee, and a bicep curl, taking out the intensity of the movement. And a march. It's now the toe tap and a bicep curl. And you'll notice that Caroline is just doing the leg movements. And a march. We're now going to do the knee raise. However, please, if you feel unstable, follow Caroline, who's doing the toe tap. Here we go. The knee is not quite as high, and the movement with the arms isn't so aggressive. And back to the march. The legs now going to the side, so a little bend. And the arms are lower. Back to the march. The leg is now going to the back, so a small bend of the knee, toe behind, and I have a bicep curl. Caroline, where about are your arms for this one? This whole section, I'm not doing my arms, I'm just concentrating on keeping my legs going. Brilliant. Back to the march. Now we're in gear one, so a gentle heel dig. Good posture, shoulders down and relax. And back to the march. It's now the toe tap. Again, you'll notice that the arms aren't moving at all. All the work is done by gentle movements of the legs. And march. We're now doing a knee raise, but 45 degrees rather than 90 degrees. Tummy pulled in tightly, hands relaxed. And it's a march. Right, the leg is now going to the side. A little bend of the supporting leg, gently does it. And it's back to the march. And now we're going to take the leg back, a toe tap, the heel away from the floor. It's a gentle bend of the leg, toe tap, short distance behind, and the arms aren't moving. And a march on the spot. So just walking through the feet, we're now going into our stretches. So take the intensity down a little bit and bring the arms around. Imagine you're hugging that big person who's quite small, so look at down at them. Feel that gentle tension in the top of the back. OK, 
Okay, release that. Pull up through the spine. Now take the feet slightly apart. Because our heart rate has come down now, we can stop the legs moving. Place the right hand on the right shoulder. Slide it down the back with the left hand to support the arm. If you feel this is uncomfy, then take the arm across the body. And you should feel a gentle tension in the underarm and release. So place the left hand on the shoulder, slide it down the back as far as is comfortable for you and with the right hand just to support it. You should feel a gentle tension on the underarm but again if your shoulder is uncomfortable or your neck uncomfortable take it across the chest and release that stretch. We're now going to stretch the chest muscles, a really important stretch to give you good posture and to make you look younger. Hands on the small of the back, pull the elbows together. Caroline is doing a slightly different one if you feel that this is too tight across your chest with her hands on her temple and pulling the elbows back. And gently release that stretch. We're now going to think about the lower body. Feet as if they're on train tracks. Take the right leg back and gently ease the heel into the floor. When you're in that position, take the weight forward onto the left leg and you should feel a gentle tension in the calf muscle and just a gentle tension. That's a lovely stretch after all that hard work you've done. Right, place the feet together again. Okay, now we're going to do the other leg. Take the left leg backwards, ease the heel into the floor to take weight forward onto the right leg and feel a gentle tension in the calf muscle. Just check that back foot's forward. And slowly back up. With the feet hip distance apart, bend the knees and take the right leg forward. Pull the tummy in tightly to support the back with the hands on the top of the thighs. Just bow forward with the eyes looking down at the floor, not at me. And you should feel the tension between the knee and the hip of the straight leg. Slowly back up again. And now we need to do that on the other leg. So feet hip distance apart. Bend the knees. Now take the left leg forward. Squeeze your tummy in before you bow with the eyes looking down at the floor. Bend forward. Feel that tension between the knee and the hip and slowly back up again. The last stretch is for the front of thigh. And again, if you feel that you need some help with your balance, then Caroline will show you how to hold onto a chair to make you more stable. The weight goes on to the right leg. The left leg comes up. Hold the top of the foot or the tracksuit bottom if that's more comfortable and feel the stretch in the front of the thigh. Gently release that stretch and now we do the other leg. So again, get stable, take the weight onto the left leg, bring the right leg up, hold the tracksuit bottom or the shoelaces and feel that stretch in the front of the thigh and gently release. Well done, everybody. Good work. Excellent well, work, Leslie.